Well, hello there, folks. How are you doing? I hope that I find you all very well indeed and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea. Or if you're new, a warm welcome to you also. Right, so this is my wee apple crumble recipe. As you can see there, you know, it just snuck ahead <laughs> and won your vote. But I will be doing the iced gingerbread as well next week because I really do love that as well. And it's a proper classic and it's lovely at this time of year. Yep. So like I said, it is the apple crumble. Really, really easy to make this one. Just a handful of ingredients, you know, and it's just one of those things, you know, it is a classic for a good reason. It's so popular in this country, you know, but you can make apple crumble, rhubarb crumble. There are loads of different, you know, different fruits that you can use in a crumble. But apple, I think, is probably the most traditional. Yep. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what I've got, you know, ingredient wise. And as usual, all of the ingredients and their weights will be in the description box down below. And I've also got cup measurements down there for you as well. So the first thing I've got there is 110 grams of soft brown sugar. So that's 85 grams for your crumble topping and 25 grams for your apple mixture. You'll need three cooking apples. I'm just using Bramley apples because they're quite tart. I've got 150 grams of plain or all-purpose flour. I've got 100 grams of cold unsalted butter. I've got one teaspoon of cinnamon and you may need a couple of tablespoons of water. You might not need that, but you might. It just depends, you know, how dry your apples are looking and I'll explain when we get there. Yep, so let's move on and we'll see what's next. Now you're obviously going to need an oven dish. I'm using this enamel pan, but I've actually got two of these. I'm going to make one for me and Mr. What's for Tea, and the other one is going to get sent round to Mr. What's for Tea's mother. So these ingredients will feed four people generously. So first thing you want to do is grab your apples and you want to take your wee sticker off. And then you just want to peel these and core them and then slice them up. You know, you don't want them, you don't want your apples too big because you know you're not going to be cooking your apples beforehand so do cut them up quite small and I'll show you in a wee second so just like that you know just that kind of size because people have asked, you know, when I've made this in the past, do you not cook your apples first? There's absolutely no need to cook your apples first. Trust me, just do them quite small and you'll be absolutely fine. So you just want to cover your apples with water and set them aside till you're going to need them later on. Easy. And now we're going to go on and do the crumble mixture itself. It's really easy, guys. Grab yourself a bowl and pop in your flour. You don't have to sift this or anything. You can if you want, but you don't have to. And then 85 grams of your brown sugar. And you just want to mix these together. And then you can pop in your cold butter. Now what you want to do, you want to bring all this together with your fingertips and this is called rubbing in. So you're basically rubbing the dry ingredients into the butter. And it'll take you probably about four or five minutes but you'll be left with a sort of coarse breadcrumb sort of texture, mixture. <laughs> So just keep rubbing away and you, you think at the beginning that it's not going anywhere but you do get there in the end. You can do this in a food processor if you like but I always think you get a much better result if you do it by hand and this is exactly what you're looking for. Like it's just sort of large breadcrumb texture and that's fine. So again you can just set this to the side for the time being. So you're going to go back to your apples and just drain the water off. There's no need to dry them or anything because you want that moisture. To that, you want to add the rest of your sugar and then your cinnamon. And just give that a good stir through. Just make sure your apples are well coated in the cinnamon and sugar. Then you can grab whatever dish you're using. Like I said, I've got enough to fill two of these wee pans. So start off with a layer of your apple in the bottom. 
and then just simply cover it over with your crumble mixture. Now just give your tin a wee shake and a wee tap just to, you know, fill up all your nooks and crannies with your crumb mixture. And just keep going until you're happy. Pile this as high as you like, <laughs> but not too high. You don't want it all spilling over the sides. And don't pack it down too tightly either because it is, after all, a crumble. So you want it quite crumbly. And this was ideal for me. Now you just want to pop this into your oven on quite a low heat. I put mine on gas mark 4. The other temperatures will be on the screen in a wee second. For about 40 to 45 minutes. And there's your other temperatures there depending on what you're using. It's a gas cooker we've got so it was gas mark 4 for us. So that yeah, that's quite a, a low temperature. You want to do this low and slow. And this is what you'll have at the end. So we're just going to serve ours with custard. Like I said, it was just me and Mr. What's for tea for pudding tonight. And the other one I made, like I said, got sent round to Mr. What's for tea's mother. But this is lovely with ice cream or cream. But we just fancied custard. Lovely, an absolute classic, and the smell of this was incredible. It's such a wonderful combination, you know, the, the cinnamon and the apples, and it's so sticky and lovely. Now, like I was saying, you might need a couple of tablespoons of water, you know, if your apples look quite dry and they don't have a lot of moisture. But mine's, as you've seen, were absolutely fine, so I didn't have to. But you might want to add a couple of tablespoons of water, you know, just before you put your crumble topping on. But that'll be completely down to what apples you've got. So you'll know yourself if you need to or not. So that was it. That was my wee quick and easy apple crumble recipe. You know, it doesn't take any time to make at all. And of course you can get these things ready made in the shops, but I just never think these kind of things are as good, you know, as that they are when you make them yourself. And then of course you've got the satisfaction of knowing that you've done it. So that always makes things taste a wee bit nicer, <laughs> I think. So thank you very much guys for popping over and checking out this wee simple recipe. You know, I really do appreciate every single one of you for coming back and checking out my wee videos and liking or disliking and leaving your comments. It means ever so much to me. It really, really does. So I'll certainly be back next week. Well, you'll see me before then, but I will be back next week and I will do the iced gingerbread recipe as well because so many of you wanted to see that. And it was quite a close call between, you know, between these two. So I'll certainly show you how to do that. But that's another quite simple one so yeah so hopefully you'll join me for that but whenever you decide to join me again guys mind to take care of yourselves and i'll see you soon so lots of love and bye for now bye now